that most men live lives of quiet desperation. It's one of my favorite quotes ever because it's true. You just li you're just in this world where you just can't wait to just run away. But I think one of the reasons why these people have this deep-seated anger and resentment is there's a bunch of people out there that have these lives that are deeply unsatisfying because I think there are so many people that are working all day long doing something that is deeply unsatisfying and, and almost painful. Yeah, soul killing. Soul killing. They're yeah. stuck in traffic all day and then they're stuck in a cubicle after that. They, 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 they relish the time to take a sh in the bathroom and look at their phone. I mean, they literally do that. That's a, a highlight of someone's day. They get in traffic on the way home. They get home after that, they're watching television and they're f If people have a regular day job, if you could just find some one thing that you do as a passion project and just keep building on it, just keep, at, keep watering it, keep adding fertilizer, keep giving it attention, keep giving it focus and you can escape. You can escape and you can be self-serving. You could be okay. You're gonna be okay. For making furniture feels good. If you make furniture, you make furniture for a living, and you, you feel a great satisfaction out of that, and you sell that furniture, look, man, if you can do that, you could, you could cut those corners perfectly and sand everything down nice and stain it, and then it's done, and you get the satisfaction, and you sell it to someone, and that pays your bills, that is infinitely more satisfying than being stuck in some fucking cubicle working for someone that you don't want to work for, having to have these stupid fucking office meetings, talking to people in human resources, sitting down with your supervisor where they evaluate your job performance and you, you know you're not really you know you, you really need to be enthusiastic about this company. This company is your future. This kind of like you're like fuck kill me now. You know there's a lot of people out there that would way rather do something else and I hope they understand that they can. And people that are trapped in bad situations, one of the problems is you feel like this is your future. You feel like you're fucked and you can't get out of that. There's no hope. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. There's no rainbow. And if you feel like that, that alone can be incredibly defining and limiting. But if you can look at, if you look at yourself objectively and say, okay, I kind of am fucked here. I'm in credit card debt. I'm working in a shitty job. I, I, I don't like what I'm doing, but I have some ideas. I need to feed those fucking ideas. And I, fe I, I need to feed them and water them, and I need to set aside a certain amount of time every day to just try to make those things happen. You can do that. Everyone has a different personality. They have different, different interests, different, different things that they would be really satisfied pursuing. That's not encouraged. The, the, what's encouraged is go find a job. What's encouraged is go find some place that you can shove yourself into. Go find a square hole that you can stick your round peg and just f and jam it in there and shave down the top and the bottom so you slide in with all this extra space on the sides and feel like sh for the rest of your life because you need a job, because you're in debt, because you have credit cards, because you have student loans, because that's what everybody does. And so you do it too. That's what's wrong. You, you have an apartment you have to pay for, you have a car you leased, you have a wife that you have to feed, you have a child you have to raise, you have, to, you have your mortgage, you have your this, you have your that, and that's where it all comes from. Well, the opportunity takes place usually when you're young and you don't have any responsibility. Th that's when you have your options. Well, your options are severely limited the more you gather responsibilities. Like, if I had to, as a 51-year-old father of three, married man, pays taxes, has a house and a mortgage and a business and all that jazz. If I had to quit everything now and struggle the way I struggled as a stand-up comedian, it would never work. But the only way I could be this person now is if I took that chance when I was 21, when I was dead broke and had my cars repossessed and all that stuff. That's the only way you, you ever get where you want to go. You have to, you have to take a path that's dangerous. And most people want to take the safe path. And the safe path leaves you stuck in quiet desperation almost every time. It's hell. It's hell. But can people just make that change? I mean, yes, look, you can, I believe they But can. you have to plan it out. The way you can change is you have to put aside enough money to give yourself a window. And then you have to have a plan. And you have to spend all your waking hours outside of whatever shit job you do planning your escape. And you have to come to the realization very clearly that you f***ed up and you got yourself stuck. 
So whatever you're doing, you have to do it like your life depends on it. And whether it is you're trying to be an author and you're going to, you're going to, if you're going to try to be an author and you're working eight hours a day, plus commuting, plus family responsibilities or whatever else you have, whatever time that you have, you have to attack like you're trying to save the world. You're trying to save your life. You don't want to drown. That one and a half hours a day that you have to write, God damn, you better be caffeinated and motivated. You got to go. You got to get after it. And you got to have discipline. That's most people don't have those things. Most people don't understand what it's like to, to really go for something. And to know that the consequences of not doing that are horrific. I think here's an important thing too. Failure is important. It is important. I think failure teaches you things that you don't learn from success. I think failure gives you an opportunity for self-examination and also gives you a feeling that is very uncomfortable. And that very uncomfortable feeling helps you grow. That when you feel like you screw something up, like when I've had bad podcasts, my podcast has always gotten better afterwards. When I've had bad stand-up sets, I've always gotten better after that because those bad sets motivate you. They get, they give you a perspective like, hey, here's some clear examples of where you f***ed up. Yeah, what not to do. Yeah, don't, and don't look at these failures as like proof that you suck. Look at them as opportunities for growth. Look at them as opportunities to be motivated to do better. You have to make mistakes. You've been there, you feel it, you understand what it is, and then you have that time to adjust. That's why losing in life is so important. Whether it's getting dumped, getting fired, losing a game, lo loss. Those feelings where things didn't work out your way, that's important because it lets you know this is the bad feeling that comes when hmm. it goes wrong and you improve and then it makes the good feelings of victory all the better. And I mean that, you know, in a relative sense, like even getting good at something, forget about victory, like making a terrible book that gets rejected by every publisher and then writing a really good one and people accept it and you're like, fuck, I got better. Yes. Like that's, no, that that's feeling. interesting. Yeah. Those feelings of failure are really critical for your motivation. You see an old person walking down the street, you go, oh, that person's always been an old person. No, that was a baby. That was a baby that became a 90-year-old man. There's a, there's a progression that you're not witness to. You don't see it. And that, that, that takes place in everything. It takes place in authors. It takes place in comedians and musicians. There is a starting point, and then with time and focus, and as long as you reevaluate and reassess and constantly, objectively look at what you're doing and then pursue it with passion and focus, you get better at things. Don't be scared of failure. I think failure is awesome for you. And that's one of the reasons why, like I said, I like doing things that I suck at. I just feel like people need inspiration and they need guidelines. And if, if as long as you could just start moving, just get action, like you're just getting just movement. So for a few months, I was staying with my grandmother who was on death's door for, she lived like a year or so after I moved out. And she wasn't really aware of me anymore. She was not quite there anymore. And my grandfather who was struggling to take care of her and just seemed sad. And I remember thinking, man, this life is temporary. Like this experience that I'm experiencing right now as a 24 year old man, like this is not going to last. Like this is the prime of my youth. And I, it, it like hardened my ideas that like, you gotta get going. This is gonna happen to you too. It's gonna happen to all of us. And you, you, you think that you're this static thing. Like you stay in the same exact state. It's not true, it's an illusion. All those people that you see that are old people, that are walking down the street with their backs hunched over, that, you're going to reach that age someday. It's going to happen. Yeah. And if you don't pay attention and it all goes wrong, you could wind up looking like that guy. You could wind up thinking and behaving like that guy. It is a slow ebbing of the life force of the body that's going to, it's going to drain you. So, God, man, get your fun out. Get your life out. Just live. You got to live. It's fucking coming. And you got to remember, because if you don't remember, you're going to sleep in. If you don't remember, you're not going to get anything done. If you don't remember, you're not going to, you're not going to have the, the, the same focus and determination that you would have with the understanding. This is a temporary experience. 
over time, I've learned that these people, you just, you, you're not going to fix them. I used to want to fix them when I was young. I used to want to go, hey, man, I see what you're doing. Like, dude, don't do that anymore. Listen, just try, just just do this and, and stop doing that and start doing this. And if you just work towards this, you could be successful. And then a week later, the guy's doing the same shit. You're like, okay, right. I'm wasting a significant amount of my energy on someone who doesn't want to waste any of their energy on themselves. And so managing the the community and the tribe that you're in, making sure that you're a good member of that tribe, that you're doing your part. When you're around happy, inspirational people that are successful, it makes you feel better and you get inspired. And if you act on that inspiration, your life will be more fulfilled. And it's not just inspirational in terms of financial success, but in terms of doing difficult things, whether it's running 100 miles, it doesn't pay you a gut thing other than the, 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 the wealth of the knowledge that you can push yourself to such an extreme or anything else, whether it's someone who becomes really good at playing chess or someone who's really good at martial arts or, or whatever it is, there's, there's a great feeling in these overcoming these difficult things. I think a lot of what happiness is is a management issue and decisions that you're making right now, like you could be in a state of mind right now, but you can make some decisions to adjust that and over the next couple hours, you'll get to a much better place. It's good to treat other people the way you would like to be treated yourself. It's like a fucking golden rule and there's a reason for it. And that reason is that we're connected in some strange way that we don't totally understand. And unless you are good to other people around you, unless you're kind and friendly and warm and loving, you're not going to fucking enjoy this life. You're just not. You're going to be problems everywhere you go. You're going to have problems everywhere you go. you got to figure out a way to enjoy this fucking life. This is not because of anybody that may or may not have ever existed. It's because that's how you fit in better in the world. That's how you stay positive. And it doesn't have to be some shit that was written 5,000 years ago on fucking animal skins. That doesn't have to be the golden rule because it's old. You know, that's dumb. We need to figure out, like, now, today. What, what is, you know, the best way to live your life? What is the, you know, there, there's got to be ways where you can be putting forward the most positive energy. I mean, we know objectively what's causing pollution. We know objectively what's causing birth defects and, you know, and are, we're taking in too much chemicals and not enough vitamins. We know objectively all this stuff. We know how to organize our world, and yet we don't do it. We know how to organize our health, and yet very few people do it. We know all these things. The right path to, like, being like a happy healthy person is to do all the shit that we already know you're supposed to do take care of your body take care of your health take care of your mind your stress meditate be kind to people we all know that I mean, you ask anybody they know how to get by and to be the most evolved version of you that you can be I mean it's not like a, a magical checklist if you talk to people about it you said okay here you're, you got a person you want to improve them what are the things you're gonna do to them Okay, well, if I was a life coach, the first thing I would say is this guy's got to get on a diet that makes him healthy. I don't mean a diet just to lose weight. I mean just healthy foods in your body, many, many vegetables. Start working out your body and get a better sense of like how this machine feels when it's moving, it's flowing better, there's less tension in it, your mind feels like relaxed and, and you enjoy every single moment of the day better. Step one, everybody knows that step, right? What's step two? Be cool to people. Be nice to as many people as you can. Smile at as many people as you can. Have them smile back at you. Tip well when you go to restaurants. Just do the most you can. Be as nice as you can and just still manage to not have people walk all over you. Just get through this life as nice as you can. Do what you want to do with your life, right? Don't don't go be doing something you don't enjoy. Don't do something that's don't get locked into you know a, a car that you can't afford and doing something crazy because you need the money. Don't don't do that. Do what you want to do. Do what the f is it that you really want to do? Because if someone else is doing it, you can do it. You know, I mean, everybody makes their own path through this world, but a lot of people don't follow the path that they really f and feel pulled to. You know, just for whatever reason, they got negative programming. You know, when they were kids, someone told them they couldn't do it or told them to take the shortcut or, or take the, uh, the, the sure route. That's a, a sad thing, man, when you talk to dudes, especially like talented dudes, and they don't follow up with what they want to do. You know, it sounds like really hippie, but true happiness comes from making other people happy. True happiness comes from being around happy people and enjoying each other's company. That's really hard for people to wrap their heads around because they always associate true happiness. No, true happiness is with like titles, you know, or you know, numbers, or you know, objects that you possess. You're you're 
you're not concerned about being nice to people. You're not concerned about having a positive impact on people. You're more concerned with making ones and zeros. But it really truly is how the human race interacts with each other. You, you really have to be nice to other people to be happy. You have to. If you're not, you won't be happy. And you know, we all make mistakes and we all find ourselves in positions of frustration and we've all acted out and yelled at our dog when maybe we shouldn't have. And you know, there's all there's pressures in this life. But I think it's really important to recognize what, what those truly are and to understand that at the end of it, we can alleviate a lot of how we deal with in this life. If we really treated people the way we would treat them as if they were ourselves living another life. And right. this includes the way you communicate with people, the friendships that you have, and making sure your friends know that you love them. They drive you, they change your opinions, they challenge you, they show compassion, you open up to each other. I mean, this is everything in this life, is community. One of the things that's true is how people, how much people enjoy being around you. That makes your life more enjoyable, and people don't mm -hmm. think of it that way. They oftentimes think, I want to be the one that's enjoying life, like especially selfish people. If people enjoy being around you, you'll enjoy everything more. The solo effort of going through life, a narcissistic perspective, one of the major problems with that is there's no one to share it with, because you're all out for yourself. Even if you get there, you're going to be filled with sadness and despair. It's not what you want. Well, you want us to be happy, right? Well, I know you think that you have to be all about yourself to be happy, but in fact, that is a way to ensure unhappiness regardless of success. That's right. You can have a $100 million house and a private jet. If you don't have love, you don't have anything. You're missing the, the key ingredient. You know, it's like having cement but not having water. You have nothing. Yeah. It's just hard for people to understand that there's techniques and there's strategies and there's philosophies that can help you steer through this world with a, a happier life. And that, that, that is a big part of it. A big part of it is embracing love and friendship and camaraderie and being nice to people. It's hard for some people because they're not even nice to themselves. What I'm saying is the way you are with your family and your friends and your loved ones and the people you communicate with, get better at that because we need each other. Love is the most important thing, and that sounds so cliche, but without love, it's all useless. This, this is a really important one, because people have this idea that somehow, I'm 30 years old, I shouldn't be doing this anymore. I'm 50 years old, I should have learned by now. That's all bull Throw that away. Toss that shit aside. You, like, these ideas of numbers that people have in their head, that by a certain age, you should br Stop. You are alive. And if you are alive, and if you are thinking, all those numbers that you keep attaching, well, you know, when Einstein was 30, he had already, shut the fuck up, stop doing that. that. That is a waste of your time. And stop saying to yourself, I should be better by now. I'm such a total non-helping thought. What you need to think of is life. You're living, you're alive right now, and if you've made a mistake and you're still continuing to learn and grow, that's exactly. all just data. You are not your past. You're you. You're you right now. Like the past you did, you might have done some things you wish you hadn't done. Don't dwell on that. You can learn from it, that's fine, but don't dwell on it. Just keep moving. Keep moving. You know, use it. Use it as fuel. Say never again. You know, I, I, get, I get what I did wrong, but don't think that you're that person that made those mistakes. You're the person who's learned. You know, and th to have that attitude is a really important thing. And to not say, why am I doing this now? I could have been doing this my whole life. Well, you you weren't, so <laughs> the f is that gonna help? Yeah, you know, you gotta just you gotta not think like that. You just gotta be happier doing it now. If I look back on anything I've ever done, mistakes I've ever made, um, paths that I, you know, what, something that I put out that I didn't quite think, man, maybe I just waited three months before I released that, or maybe I should have, you know, re-edited that blog post a couple more times before I put it online, or those things drive me crazy. Mm -hmm. The shitty things that I've done have dri driven me crazy, but yelling at someone I didn't have to yell at them for, or whatever. But the, the most important thing is always for all people to recognize that you're not who you were a year ago. You're not who you were five years ago. You're not who you were last week. You're who you are now, and this is the only shit you have control over. So you got to regulate how much you dwell on regrets of the past. You really okay. got to be careful because it's good to have a little, 
because my regrets, whether it's things of professional nature or the very few regrets friendship wise, which is one thing that makes me very happy. But you know, there's, there's, life is strange. There's a lot going on. There's, there's a lot of factors happening in life. But for sure, who I am now wouldn't have ever happened if I didn't fuck up. If I didn't make those mistakes, I wouldn't have understand the importance no, no. of friendship and kindness. And if I di hadn't been cruel at some point in my life, or someone hadn't been cruel to me, I wouldn't understand the beauty of love. I, I would have to. I wouldn't understand the full range of it because I hadn't felt the sting. If nobody ever punches you in the face, you don't really appreciate safety. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't even understand what safety is. You put, oh, we're safe, we're safe, but you are so not safe. It's way better to drive your car straight after you almost lost control on a turn. And then you get back straight, you're like, whoa. I'm not saying that you should go sideways around corners. But what I am saying is that there's a fucking yin and a yang to this world, man. And you got to fuel yourself with the fuck ups. And most people get stuck in these patterns because they define themselves as a fuck up. Or they define themselves as a person who doesn't follow through on their ideas. Or a person who doesn't pursue their real interests and loves. You define yourself by that. Well, you know, I guess okay, well, I start and things and I quit. No, you don't. No, you have started things and you quit. And it gives you a horrible sense of regret that's made you define yourself by that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You, we all do things that we're not happy that we did. But that doesn't mean that's you now. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I, I think people that, that hurt people's feelings... Even if you justify it, you know you did something. And I think that thing, that fucks with your head and it, it devalues you in your own eyes. You're not a hero in your own eyes. You're not, you're not someone who you respect. You know, you're doing what you gotta do to get by, but ultimately, you're not respecting yourself. And I think we all have a certain amount of appreciation and respect for hero figures. You know, like, we all look at, like, the guy who never lies and always does the right thing and fucking helps everybody out. And that's the John Wayne character, you know? That's, that's the, right. the ultimate hero. And when you look at your own life and you don't stack up, you're a thief, you stole money from your wife's purse, and, you know, you, 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 you don't want to smoke cigarettes, but you fucking have to, you, you can't deal with the stress, you smoke. You devalue yourself. You slowly start devaluing yourself. You, when you look at yourself, you realize that if you were judging yourself, you would judge yourself unfavorably. If you're stealing, if you're hurting people, if you're damaging 100%. people. One hundred percent. So no matter who you, you can't pretend you're the the the, the hero of, of your story. You can't. You have to be the hero of your own story. And you can do that. You can be the hero of your own story that woke up today. You can be the hero of your own story that at 40 years of age stopped, got out of bed and said, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm doing this differently I am going to figure this out and I'm going to do it only by my instincts and only by my morals and my ideals and my mind. And I'm going to be dead honest with myself because I'm realizing this is not going to last forever. And I'm going to be the nicest fucking human being to everyone I meet, possibly. And I'm going to get myself in shape and I'm going to eat healthy. And I'm going to do this because this is, this is me now. I decide that this is me. And people have to realize that you are not your past. You are not... All oh, the yeah. times you f***ed up. You are not all the times you couldn't get it up. You are not all the times you were drunk and, you know, and you, you, you threw up in someone's car. That's not you. Well, you, you are the person who's learned from a great deal of experiences. And if you learn correctly and if you process them correctly, you'll have a happier life. Look, there's a lot of ways you could look at bad events. You could say a bad event is just who you are and you just have bad events and you're a loser and <laughs> life hates you and God hates you and oh, look at that, happening to Mike again. Can't fucking <laughs> believe it. There's a lot of guys who go through life like that. And you know, they could say that they seek comfort in lowering the standards that they expect out of things. So when things go bad and they say, well, I fucking knew it. For them, it like <laughs> alleviates some concern about what's gonna happen in the future because the future is always dog shit. It's hard to be comfortable with yourself. So it's very hard to be comfortable with other people. That's why I always stress with people, like you've got to accept yourself for what you've done wrong. Do your best and also find some difficult shit to do because that gets away a lot of the anxiety that you carry around in your body. A lot of the, like f difficult things make regular life less difficult. And that sounds so simplistic. The strain of making yourself do those things 
it's very valuable. It's not just valuable like exercise and fitness and martial arts and running and whatever you're doing that's really difficult. It's not just valuable in terms of like health and the way you look, but it's also valuable for your mind, maybe even more so. Because regular life can be confusing and little things that go wrong and little problems that arise are exacerbated by the fact that you're not accustomed to dealing with hardship. So creating your own bull is extremely valuable for you also, not, not just accepting the nuanced perspectives of other people, but also being able to navigate through this world with some sort of an understanding of just how complex it all is and how weird it all is and, and, and not be overly thrown off by every little dip in the road and pothole that you encounter. Everybody's got these stupid barriers they put in their own head. You gotta resist those goddamn things because they don't do you any good and they certainly define the potential for your future in a negative way. It's not self-serving and it's not even real. You know, you, 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 you put this artificial ceiling on the potential for what you're doing. If you hit a wall, okay, that just means you need to regroup and rethink. It doesn't mean that wall's there, especially when it comes to something like social media or like a, a podcast, something where you just, you're putting out a piece of art. You're putting out something that you've created. There's no wall as far as like how many people are going to enjoy it or how far it's going to go. It's just, it is what it is. And if people don't like it, make it better. If they like it less, fix that. F figure out a way to do it. You can do that. And this, this idea that there's no way to get past the starting block today is just ludicrous. It's crazy. And it's just this, this poor thinking. Some of these guys say that. Because yeah. if, if, you, if people don't hear it, they're going to get a bad job. And they're going to they're gonna waste their fucking life. Folks, it ain't about that. It ain't about the guy who drives by in a clean car when you're dirty. It's not his fault. It's you should figure out how to be clean. You should figure out how to do a job that doesn't involve you walking in mud all day. And that's possible. Because oh. somebody else has done it. And it doesn't mean... I don't buy the idea that you know, the society the way it is right now, it has to be this way. Someone's always going to have to work at Burger King. Someone's always going to have to. I don't buy that. I think people are pretty f***ing flexible. If you look at the broad spectrum of humans and human behavior from different cultures all over the world, it's pretty obvious to me that there's, there's a lot of different ways that people can act. We don't have to have fast food workers. We don't, we, we don't have to have people who work sh jobs. We don't have to. We just need to figure out how to restructure society so everybody somehow or another plays a part, has something to contribute, has something to share. I mean, that's what a real society is supposed to be like. I give you some coconuts, you give me some fish. You know, we make a deal and you do it back and forth and left and right. And when there's nothing to contribute, then you start looking, the president needs to give us jobs. We need jobs. So instead of something to contribute, you just find something to do with your time. And then it becomes about doing that more than it becomes about finding something to contribute. So society gets wrapped around becoming a part of a machine. Society, instead of becoming a bunch of individuals that are expressing themselves in unique ways and everybody sort of borrows and shares and, and, and sells this and you sell that and we all sort of figure out how we can contribute in a society, we got sidetracked and diverted into these boxes that they call companies and corporations and we got stuck into these containers they go cubicles or offices and we got forced into this system so our time instead of it being invested in making pottery or or fixing cars or doing something where you have a, a passion or you have some sort of a connection to instead of that you've sold your life to sit in a box and work for a machine, an uncaring machine that demands productivity. It doesn't understand you, it doesn't want to understand you. It has a bunch of very strict things in order to keep the humor at a minimum in the office, just in case one of you kids says some stupid sex jokes to get them sued and they have to give somebody a million dollars. So get it together and this is your life now no natural behavior. Everybody's wearing clothes they don't want to wear. Everybody's showing up and doing something they don't want to do. They have no connection to. That's the problem with our society. And then what's the reward for all this stuff? Go home, get a big TV. Go home, you're going to get a shiny belt buckle. You're going to get a nice purse. You're going to wear shoes that you couldn't afford last week. You're going to get that dream car. And every week we're chasing down this new object. And every week we're trying to fill this hole in this 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 sad shadow of a life that we've been left with after work that you work eight to whatever to hours a day plus commuting and then you're like this 
And that's your life. That's your real fucking life. All that other stuff is not your life anymore. All that other stuff is work. And most of us have committed to that. I know you've been there before, and I've been there before. And we, we understand that it's a trap because we got out of it. But for the people that are in it, a lot of times they don't even understand it's a trap. They just think it's a good job. They think they got dental. I'm doing really good. You know, I got my own parking spot. It's got my name on it. And you're just a piece of a heartless, shitty machine that makes money. I think everyone looks forward to this utopian time where whatever motivates them, drives them, freaks them out right now can be set aside, the work is done, and you can just sort of like watch the sunset over the pond. And the, the, the problem is this utop utopian vision of the future that we have is probably a carrot that's on a stick that we'll just never reach. And we keep working hard to improve our society and our life and ourselves and our families and our relationships, hoping that one day we'll achieve this ultimate peace that will never come. When you're alone with your thoughts, you get an idea of what your thoughts actually are. If you live your life just acting constantly on the momentum of other people's expectations, of you wanting to be liked by these other people, you can run into a trap and you, you, you set up a life that you didn't really want. You're, 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 you're trapped in this situation where you have a mortgage, you've got credit card bills, you've got student loans you have to pay, you have a bunch of shit going on that you have to continue to feed. And all that, and especially if you have a family and you have to feed them, oh my goodness. Then you're fully locked in, you can't take any chances whatsoever. And oftentimes people make the mistake of getting stuck. And it is just a tactical mistake, just like it would be a mistake if you got stuck on a video game. Just like it would be a mistake if you followed a map incorrectly and you got stuck in the woods. Your life is certainly some sort of a journey. It's certainly some sort of a journey. And we have to all be aware that when we're making journeys, we're not going to always make the right steps. And sometimes you have to back up and try again. And if you're in a position where you can't back up and try again, you've trapped yourself. And the system will set out honeypots for people to get trapped in. The system will set out the ideas of retirement, the ideas of the golden years, providing you benefits, providing you a healthy work environment. Why? Well, because they want people to work for them. They don't want people to realize their own dreams and escape. But those, that's a pain in the ass. So you got to hire more people and train them. And they want to set it up so that you stick around. You stick around in some sort of an unsatisfying world. It's up to you to see that video game problem, to see that issue as it comes up on the map. And no, no, I think this is a right turn to see all the problems that could potentially lay in front of you and calculate your your future and then also look around all the people that didn't do it and look at the misery that they're in and learn that you don't want to be like them and then look at the people that are have kind of taken chances and navigated their way what did they do differently than you what 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 objectivity do they have that maybe you lack what insight into their own mistakes are they willing to delve into that you're not that you step back and you go you know I don't just don't I just don't want to look at myself that closely but the person who's able to look at themselves the closest is going to get the more rational results. I completely agree with you, and we're going to get attacked for this by people who are unhappy with their choices in life. And that's a fact. You know, there's, there's a, a bunch of people that will say, Yeah, well, I have a family, so, you know, it's a great idea for you to just go out there and go crazy. I have people to support. You need to listen. Stop saying that. Stop saying any of those things. Every single person who has ever done anything worthwhile or exceptional or difficult or extraordinary, anyone, whether it's great artists or authors or mathematicians or whatever the f*** it is, everyone encounters difficulties. There is no easy road. It does not exist. It is impossible. Everyone has issues. If you have time to pursue a hobby, if you have time to do anything in your life, you can better yourself. And here's one way you never better yourself. When you come up with excuses for why other people are successful and you're not. That shit is fucking dangerous. When you give yourself an escape. Yeah, well that's easy for you to say. You know, you do this, you do this, you do this. Trust me. Everybody has a hard road. We all go through hard times. We all go through depression. We all do go through doubt and, and then moments in your life where it's really fucking difficult and you're trying to figure out what the fuck your path is going to be. It's hard as shit. But that is what makes you a person. And those difficult moments are what build your character.
You're making fifteen dollars an hour, and you have children to feed. You have a, a dream. You have a risk. You have you have a, a, a thing to do, and you're scared. And a, lo a lot of people would advise you to not take any risks in that situation. And that might be good advice because everybody's got a unique situation. Everybody's situation is totally, completely unique, and um, it's it's hard always. But my advice is always: you have to think of your life in terms of. First of all, it's a temporary situation. You have a finite amount of time, and it can be a good time or it can suck. Mm -hmm. And if it sucks, you have to fight to change it as if your life depends on it, because it really does. It really does. The quality of your life depends on it. The, 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 the quality of the experience depends on it. And you've got yourself into a bad situation. Like if you went down the wrong road, okay, if you're going, if you have a destination to go to and you're supposed to go left, but you fuck up and you go right and you go right for like a couple of miles and you realize like, oh my God, I went right. What do you do? Do you keep going right? Do you, yeah. but, but do you, do you stop, get out of the car and cry? No, you realize like, oh my God, it's going to take me hours and hours and hours to go back and turn around and turn back. Yeah, that's what you got to do. You got to get better the same way you got sick. Mm -hmm. you, you've been living your life. And if you've been living your life with a, with a bad diet or with uh, a bad mindset, or you've been living like blaming other people for your failures, you've got to recognize that those things are not serving you well. And you have to back up and you have to go left. You have to go the right way. You have to figure out a way to get on the right path. And for a lot of people, that kind of change and that kind of alteration of these comfort patterns that people fall into is extremely difficult to do. But you've got to do it. You've got to do it. It's the only way to do it. Wondering why other people's success or wondering why other people are successful is the refuge of losers. It's a loser mentality. It's a loser occupation. It's a loser practice because you're wondering why other people are successful. Like, who gives a f you can say you think it sucks, but to spend time wondering why someone is successful and hating on someone Ugh. for being successful, it doesn't do any good. It's like, what is that old expression that jealousy is, it's a p poison that does the opposite of its intended? Oh, right. It doesn't affect the other person at all, but it poisons yourself. It wastes your, t your energy and time. And everybody's different. They, they're, everybody's similar, but everybody's different. And your attitude has a giant effect not just on your life but on other people's lives around you that's the other thing about it those i can't catch a break guys get them the fuck away from me i can't i can't be around those guys i don't want to hear that shit. i don't want to hear that shit. i don't buy it because everybody has bad breaks yeah i've had a shit ton of bad breaks but you know what i did i stayed up and i thought through it and i and i figured out what the fuck i did wrong and then i went back it's like i up everything I've ever done a hundred times. There's no way to other. Do, there's no other way to do it. And I've had a bunch of shitty breaks. Everybody has. But you got to realize when you have those shitty breaks what that is. It's an opportunity for you to reassess, reboot, get better, figure out another way, find another way through. It's just, just little challenges. And the people that look at those challenges go, Why do I always have these challenges? They're cancer. Those people are dangerous to be around. They will rob you of your enthusiasm. They don't give you any fuel. They're the opposite of fuel. Like the, the fuel people, the, the people tank. that are kicking ass, the people that are out there just fucking hustling, always, always getting things done. You go and get after it, you don't make any excuses. And those kind of guys are fuel. But those I can't catch a break guys, they're the opposite of fuel. They're just pissing on your fire. They're no fun. The people that surround them are all idiots. Because only idiots want to be around I can't catch a break guys. Yeah. Only the dummies stick around. After a while, even if they're your good friend, you gotta be like, bro, you gotta fucking stop. You gotta stop with all this I can't catch a break bullshit. All the time you're complaining, you could be instead hustling. You could be instead chasing your dream. You could be instead figuring out what you're doing wrong, trying to improve certain aspects of your life, getting your shit together, reading a book, meditating, something. Fucking something. But this I can't catch a break shit is not helping anybody and it pushes everybody away from you. But some people, they get caught in that pattern. And it might be their parents. It might be how they were raised. Somebody might have told them they were useless real early on. It's stuck. And they just, they always, they never feel like they get enough reassurance. They never feel like they get enough motivation. And they feel like other people get more. And they look at all these other people. How come he gets that? How come she gets this? How come he's got that going on? And that, all that's bad for you too. That shit, no good for you. There's no one human being where everyone's going to listen. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no one positive message. Hey, we should just love each other. 
hey, we should value community and friendship, and we should take care of our bodies and be healthy. That could say anything where everyone's going to listen. Yeah. But that is the most significant factor. Mm -hmm. The most significant factor is doing things that are positive, both for your health and for your friendships and for your community, and also like choosing a path in life that is actually rewarding and satisfying. And that's hard. It's a very difficult thing to do. And this idea that you know everybody starts at the same starting block is fucking total horseshit. And that is something that people who are doing well like to stick in the face of people that are really were dealt a really bad hand of cards. The problem with human psychology is that we do tend to concentrate on negative things. It's not healthy for anybody. And the more time you can concentrate on yourself and people you care about and friendships and love and community and your actual interests, real interests. You should have hobbies, you have things you're curious about. The more you take care of your own bullshit, the less you're going to worry about other people's bullshit. And the more you can enjoy things that you're actually interested in, as opposed to spending time cultivating negativity, which is so intoxicating. It's so easy for people to get caught up in this artificial drama. This thing that we all have, everyone has, and not just me, I mean everybody that does anything has. And it's like this voice in your head that wants you to do nothing. Your mind has to seek discomfort. It has to seek these difficult tasks. You have to enjoy it. And you have to figure out a way to make your mind enjoy those things. Some people it comes easy and some people it doesn't. Some people it takes a long time. I always tell people the best thing you could ever do is force yourself to a schedule. Just write it down. Showing up when you don't want to show up. Forcing yourself to do things you don't want to, but then reaping the rewards. Discipline equals freedom. And it's true, because he's able to force himself to do that every single time. There's no excuses. There's no breaks. There's no days off. It doesn't happen. So because of that, you're, like, you're not scared. You know that you can keep doing it. You know that you can continue to perform. There's a lot of people that are scared of their ability to do something that's difficult. They're scared of whether or not they, like you see someone who's doing something that's really tough to do and you go, man, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could force myself to, to be disciplined. I don't know if I could force myself to take that kind of action. Well, if you do force yourself to take that kind of action, you don't have that question anymore. That question, I don't know if I can do it. Well, you're doing it. Most people, their associations are to avoid anything that's uncomfortable. But it's so illogical because when you look at comfort and you look at success and progress and the eventual, the feelings of accomplishment and of getting past certain hurdles in, in terms of like how you feel about life, a lot of those are connected to discomfort. Like discomfort is your friend. It really is. Like discomfort, not being happy and content with certain situations in life or certain feelings in life, they're massive motivators and they're, they're amazing at facilitating change. Instinct is to avoid those and just sit on the couch and watch some fucking reality show about dudes who make moonshine. Well, when I was 21 and I was first starting to do comedy, that's when I was really devouring as much of it as possible because I was trying to figure out like how to not be so lazy, how to be motivated, how to get done, and how to how to like find the correct path and think about things correctly. I would follow all this personal power, like you yeah, have workshops that you would do, like little like notebooks and shit fill out and things to talk about and things to concentrate on. Like if you did do it, it would help you. But really what it's all about is just getting together and moving. Just go do something. Just doing it. Just doing it makes you do more. Like do more hard makes you do more hard. Yeah. Understand that you want it bad, so you're willing to put in the work and do things you don't want to do. It's what makes you have that confidence that you know how to push through. And the, the, the mentality that I'm the type of dude to get done. Like, I'm gonna show, I'm not gonna waste my day just sitting around a hotel room. No, I'm gonna go to work. That's what I feel like is missing from a lot of people that are getting into motivational this, motivational that. They ain't doing shit. You gotta go do something. <laughs> That's the number one thing, right? It's fucking action. Take action. Well, I think the one thing that discipline definitely does help you with is it, it helps you get things done. And when you get things done, when you, you, you actually do things, you, 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 you have more success. 
if you have more success, and sometimes a, a big part of success is just not being fucking lazy and just doing it. Yeah. Just get, that's like 90% of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like, you're not going to feel perfect every day. If I felt, if I only worked out when I felt good, I'd be a fat because there's a lot of days I don't want to do it. I mean, it's pretty much the same with everybody that that actually gets good at something. You you get there's got to be those days you push through, and they're they're probably going to be more numerous than the days you don't. And so the benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline I get things done. I always tell my I always say that I'm like the most lazy disciplined person I know because I don't want to do it. Yeah, but I always do. You know, and that you have to sit down, you have to overcome resistance, and that the pro goes to work. And it doesn't matter if you're sick, it doesn't matter if you have kids, it doesn't matter what you, you're a pro, and you go to work. And that, and that just, it puts it in your head that this is what I do. This is what, and you have pride in that. You know, and yeah. you, you, you're doing the work. Yeah. And out of that work, gems blossom. Yeah. Little things, but you might have a day where you just write nothing but dog. So what? Show up again tomorrow. And tomorrow out of that dog, a flower will emerge. You never know. And that's the only way to really develop your potential 100% in anything. One of the worst decisions a man can make, I can only speak for men, obviously, is to be comfortable. I, d I don't think you should try to be comfortable. I think what you should try to do is try to earn comfort. And if you if you can get a day off where you you you've worked hard and you've, you've accomplished goals, that day off will be so sweet. Through difficult tasks, you learn an incredible amount about yourself. And through the fire of competition, you get to understand motivation. You get to understand the resistance that you have inside your mind to doing hard work. Mm. You get to understand the rewards of discipline. Like you don't truly appreciate relaxation unless you've worked hard. Mm. And that is the yin and the yang of life. Understanding that the, you can achieve those goals. It's gonna be difficult. You're gonna push through the difficulty. And then you're gonna understand what difficulty truly is and how much of it is just mental how much of it is just in your mind this adversity to to uh, difficult task or to struggle you know and a lot of people have that they're scared they're scared of, of complications they're scared of failure failure is a big one that people are afraid of but failure is one of the most important things you could ever have I think failure teaches you things that you don't learn from success. I think failure gives you an opportunity for self-examination and also gives you a feeling that is very uncomfortable. And that very uncomfortable feeling helps you grow. And don't look at these failures as like proof that you suck. Look at them as opportunities for growth. Look at them as opportunities to be motivated to do better. We have been fed this line of horse that you're supposed to seek comfort. And I don't think you are. I think you're supposed to seek lessons and you're supposed to seek difficult tasks and, 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 and accomplishments and through those things and through doing things that are hard to do, even if it's just a 90 minute hot yoga class. What I tell people is the best advice that I, I've ever heard, the best advice I ever came up with is that live your life like you're the hero in your movie. And right now is when the fucking movie starts and your life is a shit bag disaster, like every fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where he wakes up and makes a blender full of pizza and ice cream and that's what he, you know what I mean? Yeah. Those guys where they're like on the brink, they put the gun in their mouth and they put it down because you see a photo of their daughter. Pretend that's you. <laughs> Pretend you are, uh, right now, you're in the part of the movie that starts and it shows you as a fucking loser. And just decide not to be a loser anymore. Live your life like there's a documentary crew following you around and you are analyzing your own behavior. Do what you would want to do so that your kids one day would look back at it and, and, and see that documentary and look on it with pride. Like, wow, my dad was a bad motherfucker. He really did what he had to do. Wow, my mom really got her together. I love a success story, but even more than a success story, I like a dude who f***s his life up and then gets it back together again story. Those are my favorite stories. And the way to do that, you gotta write it down. You gotta think that you are the hero in your own fucking movie, and then you gotta sit down and you gotta write it down. Write down what you need to do. I mean, that Nike slogan, just do it, it's one of the greatest the slogans of all time. Yeah. So true. Get out there and go fucking do something. Just go, just go. And then in the middle of doing it, it'll become easy. Even if it's not, even if it's not easy, even if it's hard, it's easier than not doing it and wishing that you had done it. So you obviously can do it. Can you do it tomorrow? We well, did it today. Why can't you do it tomorrow? Just do it.